My name is Spencer and this is a tour of my tiny workshop. Uh, this space has just been so awesome for over 10 years now. I've been using this workshop. Uh, it's a one car garage and we're finally moving to a bigger property with a bigger workshop. And in this video, I just wanna do two things. One is give you a tour of the shop, show you what I've got and what I don't have in here. And the second is to go over some principles for working in a small shop. The things I've learned that help make it an effective workspace. All right, so let's start on the outside. You can see it's a one car garage and the shop itself is 13 by 20. So it's about 270 square feet. But uh, early on, when we first moved in here, I added on this additional shed off the back. You can see I've got some like sheets of plywood here and typically some trim and stuff like that up high here. And this overflow has been really nice. I learned early on that if that workshop, that one car garage was gonna work for me as a fabrication space, I was gonna need some kind of overflow area for like garden tools and bikes and stuff like that. And when all that stuff was stored in the shop itself, it was just unusable. So once I created some overflow storage for stuff that didn't have to do with building things, like bikes and lawnmowers and tools and stuff like that, like lawn tools, uh, the shop itself became much more effectively use. Alright, so inside the shop I've got basically three areas and I'll show you each one in order. Okay, so up front here I've got a lot of stuff kind of stored along the wall that allows me to get through the middle of the shop and you'll see that a lot of this stuff is on wheels or should be on wheels so I can actually drag it out and move it out front here which outside the garage in this area right here is where I do a lot of my fabrication. Okay, so we got the compressor here, a chop saw, and some kind of deep storage on the back wall here of axes and uh, chainsaws and whatnot. I keep nice lumber stored in here, like stuff I'm actually using up on the wall here. And back here, this is pretty critical, I have a bunch of folding work tables and I'll put a card up here. I've got another video about all these work tables. They're really awesome because I can store them away on the wall and then pull them out when I need them. Um, I've also got my table saw, which is on wheels. I previously had a bigger table saw cart, but this guy on wheels works pretty well. I can roll it outside and use it or roll it out here to the middle of the floor. Um, I'm also currently using this metal job box as kind of like an improvised welding table. It's also small enough that I can move it around. And then right here, this is my one open project I've got right now. I'll say more about that in a little bit. It's on another table that I can move around. And then I really utilize the walls as much as I can for storage in here just to clear out the center. So I've got my clamps on one wall. I've got a shelf up high. Everything in this shop is compartmentalized. So I've got like my leather working and knife box up here. I can pull that out if I'm using it. I've got hinges and knobs if I'm doing cabinet work. Again, I pull that out. Um, deep art supplies that I haven't used in way too long. And this is mainly electrical stuff, lights and whatnot. And then a box of all my vices. Those are just like vices I can't get rid of. My main vice that I use is right here, my main bench vice. This guy, and then this one for clamping, big piece of wood. On this back wall here is my work table. You can see I've got my drill press on this end and then uh, some tools hung up in the middle. And this is where most of my woodworking tools are hung on the wall. I also just hang up all kinds of other stuff. I've got my uh, hand truck up here and a ladder. Now this wall is definitely the most kind of busy and crowded of all of them in the shop, but you know, it gets to be your shop and you know where everything is. I've got my power cords up here. This is mainly like painting and caulking and stuff like that. Uh, ropes and cables. I got a tile and masonry box here. Again, everything's compartmentalized. Um, I use these all the time. This is a box of gloves of various kinds and a box of rags. And then in here, I've got some kind of uh, dense storage of screws and fasteners, more uh, bolts and nuts, fasteners, sandpaper, plumbing supplies, uh, electrical supplies, etc. And then one more area of deep storage that you haven't seen yet is under the bench. Under the bench is where I keep a bunch of power tools. So this is all like air tools, uh, drivers, sanders, nailers, and stuff like that. I've also got a couple uh, tool boxes that I'll pull out. So I have like an electrical toolbox. 
I have a fixture and fastener toolbox, I have a plumbing toolbox, etc. All right, so now that you've seen an overview of my shop, let me go through some principles that I have sort of adapted to and sort of developed in the 10 years I've been using this space. I think they're gonna help you if you've got a small workshop, I help you work effectively and enjoy your space. Now the first and probably the most important principle is that your tools, your big tools and materials need to be foldable, portable on wheels and things like that. I do have a drill press that sits in one place, but other than that, most of my big tools can be moved. Um, it is really appealing to me to have like a chop saw station on the side of my shop. I would love that, but I just can't do it. I've gotta be able to pull out my chop saw, put it on a stand and use it in place. And that also goes for the table saw, the welding cart, etc. In a small shop like this, having a welding station with a big welding table would be really cool, but that would mean dedicating your shop to welding. And I just can't do that. I've got my welding stuff on a welding cart, my wood cutting stuff on carts and foldable tables, etc. And that portability allows a lot to be sort of stored on one side and then moved out when you need it. All right, principle Principle number two, this one sucks, but it's just totally true. Uh, the principle is that you can't do everything in a shop like this. Now, you can see that I tried to do everything. I've got masonry stuff, I've got electrical uh, work um, toolboxes and whatnot. I've got plumbing, a plumbing setup so I can do plumbing work, uh, woodworking, metalworking, etc. But you don't see a blacksmith shop in here. You don't see a full blown a uh, woodworking setup with like a jointer and a router table and that kind of thing. I've got a small router table that I keep socked away up high and I'll pull it out and use it. But I had to make some choices. I had to make some choices about what I was going to focus on and what I wasn't going to focus on and just accept the fact that some some aspects of the shop had to be minimized and kind of downsized for it to work. A good example of that is the bandsaw that I used to have. I had a Black & Decker bandsaw that took up, you know, kind of like a permanent station over in the corner here. And finally I realized that I could gain that space back and do a lot of the work I was doing on the bandsaw using my portable jigsaw. Now, the work is not as good using the jigsaw and I've got to sand afterwards and whatnot, but it was just a compromise I had to make. So the same thing goes with the joiner. I would love to have a big joiner, but I don't have room for it. Instead, I'll use my table saw as a jointer and it actually works pretty well and I've just kind of learned to adapt to it. Okay, another principle, pretty simple, but I hope you can see it in here. Um, one of the first things I did in this shop was to light it up. Um, it had one light bulb on the ceiling and one shop light over the bench and that just wasn't going to do it. Um, you've got to add some light to your workspace. If you want paint, paint it. It'll lighten it up. If you want art on the walls, do it. If you need water, add water. You know, this is a space that you're going to be spending a lot of time in and you want that to be enjoyable time. All right, next principle is that when possible, I try to actually work outside. That means rolling my stuff out into the driveway in front of my garage or putting it in the yard and do my work out there. It keeps the sawdust out of the shop and it also just means that I've got more space around me and breathing room. I do run a shop vac on my tools to collect dust in here, but it's just not a full blown dust collection system. And I don't care what people tell you, even with a dust collection system, you end up with some dust. And keeping your shop clean is awesome and really important, but you're gonna just be fighting an uphill battle if you're cutting all your wood and grinding all your metal in your shop. If I do that outside, I feel like I'm just kind of one step ahead in the cleaning game. Okay, next principle, and this is one you might not even think about, but in a shop like this, you need some power. I've got two circuits, uh, uh, run in this shop and one of them is on a 30 amp breaker without that 30 amp breaker I can't run one of my welders So I also have the lights and a couple sockets on one circuit and then a dedicated uh, Circuit just for one receptacle that I can run my table saw and my welder off of um, That kind of infrastructure. It's like easy to overlook, but it's pretty critical now This next principle is something I have not always been really good at but I mentioned a minute ago and that is the idea that you need to pretty relentlessly get rid of stuff. That means if you have a, a 
project and you're, you're using plywood, big old four by eight sheets of plywood, and you end up with a bunch of scraps that you like and you think you're gonna use some other day, give yourself a time limit on those guys. Before too long, you're gonna have big piles of wood scraps and know where to store them. Same thing with offcuts of metal, tile from tile projects that are left over, etc. You've gotta relentlessly get rid of stuff, otherwise in a small shop, and you know, this one's about 270 square feet, and I've got that bike shed on the back, but even in a shop this size, you will just be inundated with stuff. Every time you buy a tool, try to get rid of a tool. Uh, every time you pick up some wood, look at your wood supply and see if there's anything you could donate, use, or get rid of. All right, the last pr principle I'm gonna mention is my idea that you only engage with one project at a time. Now, again, I haven't always done this, but this table in the back is kind of a good example, this table project. That's my project right now. It takes up four feet by four feet of shop space just in two dimensions and more three-dimensionally. That guy is taking up some space. If I was trying to build a table and some chairs and weld up something over here, it would just be too much for this shop. So one project at a time is a great rule of thumb. It means that you keep things in order and have like a focused work area and it'll also help you meet your deadlines. All right, thanks for checking out my tiny shop. Uh, it's gonna be kind of sad to see this thing go. I think there is a belief out there that you need a huge shop, like you need a really big workspace to work effectively. And I guess I'm gonna have to test that out in my new space. I will have more room around me, but I'm kind of wondering if I do better work. So we'll have to see. Thanks for checking out the video, and I hope you get the chance to build something cool in the very near future.